Cardinal John Henry Newman said that a university seems to be in its essence a place for the communication and the circulation of thought by means of personal intercourse through a wide extent of country. Hi, I'm Scott Postman for Kepler Education, and in today's practicum, I would like to discuss the changing landscape in education by asking whether or not online education can provide a new site for the old university. Before we dive too deep, let's define our terms. Our English word university derives from medieval Latin universitatum, and it means the whole or the aggregate. Note the prefix uni, which means one. The idea of one in this sense relates back to both Aristotle and the early church fathers who understood all knowledge as issuing from one single source, God. When we use the word university in the academic sense, we're technically shortening the phrase universitas magistorum et excolarium, and it means a community of masters and scholars. So when I use the word university in this video, I'm using it to mean exactly that, a community of masters and scholars. And to be clear, I'm not strictly limiting my use of it to the institutions we in the U.S. often think of as college or the university. I'm also including what is commonly understood as high school, since prior to its recent introduction, educated persons were educated by engaging in the university, the community of masters and scholars. In his classic treatise, The Idea of a University, Newman further asserts that mutual education, in a large sense of the word, is one of the great and incessant occupations of human society, and is carried on partly with set purpose and partly not. A university does but contemplate, he says, this necessity of our nature and is a provision for that necessity. In other words, Newman is pointing to another Aristotelian notion, one that is also verified by human experience, that all men by nature desire to know. And an indication of this desire is the delight we take in our senses. For example, human beings not only love sightseeing, but we love to see, period. We not only want to behold sunsets, but we also want to smell the roses and listen to the birds sing, taste good foods and fine wines, and feel the textures of fabrics and the warmth of human touch. We investigate news stories, do scientific research, and Google everything we don't know. And in our desire to know, we not only read books and watch videos, we also find other people with whom we can talk, ask questions, and exchange knowledge. This is what Newman is highlighting, that mutual education is one of the great and incessant occupations of human society, and it's carried out in part formally and in part informally. That is, we learn by going to the classroom, and we learn by talking to our elderly next door neighbor. In sum, the idea that universities exist, those communities of masters and scholars where we can gather to learn, highlights one of the necessities of our human nature, the desire to know, and are the natural manifestations of that desire. Universities must exist as long as human beings desire to know. And with that, we come to the changing nature of education in our times. It's not breaking news that the university, as it was intended to function, and as Newman has here described it, is a rare find. But in more recent years, its decline has accelerated. And this is to say nothing of the high schools which have failed to achieve the desired result of preparing students for university. Most institutions of higher learning have all but resorted to job training, become party schools, and now offer safe spaces that limit the exchange of ideas to protect the sensitive feelings of the modern student. Additionally, academic rigor has been reduced to the lowest common denominator. Secular ideology is propagated through every channel of communication available, and most institutions of higher learning would be fiscally insolvent without the support of the government-backed student loans to pay the exorbitant tuition costs. And these issues, they're just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. The point is, education is at a crossroads. And if the social scientists and economists are correct, the entire landscape of education as we know it will be unrecognizable in the next five to 10 years. While most of these changes are definitely bad and have happened because of a lot of bad decisions over a long period of time, there is a silver lining. By leveraging available technology, Christians have the opportunity to recover the university model of education while the current model completes its demise. Kepler Education is an example of the silver lining.
Kepler uses a flipped classroom model, also referred to as the university model, to offer junior high school students, high school students, and adult learners a quality classical Christian education without compromising academic rigor, putting families in debt, or depending on government assistance to educate students. Additionally, Kepler is intentional about creating an academic community modeled after Newman's idea of a university. In other words, Kepler is not just offering modern education over the internet using Zoom meetings. We've all seen how that fared during the COVID crisis. Rather, we use tools like Zoom to create what Newman would call a virtual university, an academic metropolis where students can come from every quarter for every kind of knowledge, where the personal presence of teachers and masters are the living voice, the breathing form, the expressive countenance, which preaches and catechizes. At Kepler, we hold that the general principles of any study can be learned by books at home, but the detail, the color, the tone, the air, the life which makes it live in us, you must catch all these from those in whom it lives already.